All right, hey guys, welcome back to Recreational Sniper. I've been working on some problems and solutions. Uh, basically, just practicing getting this stuff right, or as close to right as I can get it. Now, uh, there's some of this stuff that I'm, I've got going on that there may be better ways of doing it than the way I'm doing it, more precise ways of doing it, and I'm definitely open to learning those ways so if there's any of you guys out there that watch my channel and are uh knowledgeable more knowledgeable about this stuff than i am i am all ears if you want to teach me a better uh calculation or formula or whatever for any part of this so with that being said the problem we have here is we've got a target at a range of 1637 yards on a 90 degree day the target direction is due north that's going to be important later for our Coriolis calculation um, and we're at an, a target where we're shooting at now is at 1100 feet and the barometric pressure is 28.87 Humidity we looked at on is 50%, which is the same as what we trued our ballistic table to. So, uh, but we also have a wind speed of 17 miles an hour coming from two from the two o'clock to the eight o'clock direction. So, from like shooting this way, we'll look at that here in just a second, a little closer. Um, I know that coming from that direction, we can use a wind cosine of 0.707. And I do need to go into detail on that at some point and kind of teach you how to, where to get these cosines from for, for calculating your wind uh, values, depending on which direction they are, because a full value would be straight across and then a lot of people would think that at a 45 degree you just call it a half value and then if it's vertical it's no value but ours is about the two o'clock area coming this direction towards us um, and it's actually a little over 70 percent is the cosine for that 70.7 percent And we're shooting from a latitude of 34.7. Okay, so the bullet profile running a Barnes match burner 145 grain 6.5 millimeter bullet. Uh, G1 ballistic coefficient is 0 0.703. The length of the bullet is 1.468 inches. And the uh, gyroscopic stability of the bullet is 1.58. Now, Really, the only way to get this gyroscopic uh, stability is, I don't know the formula for it, which I, I plan on learning how to do that by hand, and I don't think it's a very difficult formula. I've looked at it before, I just don't remember it, and I don't have it in front of me, so I, instead of just calculating it out by hand, I used Berger's website, and they actually have a gyroscopic stability calculator on their website so that's where I got this number from based on the the spin or the rate of twist in my barrel and that sort of thing muzzle velocity and whatnot so on from that some calculations we are going to have to know are the uh, formulas for spin drift horizontal Coriolis and then I come up, these two down here, I come up with on my own, uh, just a way, a simple, but not necessarily accurate way to uh, convert the uh, minutes of angle for different, like a conversion between different altitudes. Uh, for instance, my ballistic chart here, this is set up for 29.26 uh, inches of mercury and at an altitude of like 614 feet. That's my home range. That's where I do all of my bullet testing and data gathering. Um, 
but say we're going to move to an area that is 1100 feet and the pressure is 2887 now um, basically I just take the pressure at the target target pressure TP divide that by the chart pressure which is like what I have here um, and then multiply that by the minutes of angle on my chart and then I do the same thing for the time of flight conversion which as you notice I actually wrote all these down on the side over here that is actually something I'm going to be adding to my ballistic chart is a time of flight uh, deal and it's going to be standardized for my 70 degree zone like this is what I set my standard at is 70 degrees for the area I'm in that's where I try to do all my you know get my perfect load and then from there I can you know add speed and therefore less drop or subtract speed and therefore add drop depending on the temperature range it's in same thing with uh, the uh, wind drift temperature chart which is going to be uh, I even forgot about that I've got to do a conversion for that as well because as you see our problem says we're going to be shooting at 90 degrees and um, the closest thing I've got to it is the 100 degree temperature which is going to be a little bit different in dri wind drift so, you know, from, from 90 degrees to uh, 100 so I'm actually going to have to come back some on that. That'll be interesting to try to calculate. But we're going to try to do some of this here. So first thing is um, this target range is 1,637 yards. Well, you can look at my chart, and it's in units of 100 yards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to 1,600 and we'll use the calculator here because we're going to have to. So at 1600 on, nine, on a 90 degree day, we're showing negative 45.7. And then at 1700 is negative 51 even. Uh, this would be in minutes of angle for drop. All right, so we're going to convert that to read out for uh, 1637, or as close to 1637 as we can get. So we're going to take uh, 51, and we're going to subtract. Uh, we're going to subtract uh, 45.7, and. We're going to get five point, a difference of 5.3 minutes of angle. And we're going to go, since we're at 1,637 yards, we're going to go 37% of that 5.3. So we're going to multiply that by 0.37 and convert that back to a decibel there. And so we're going to add 1.961 to our 45.7 and that's going to give us a MOA just a uh, what we need to change our drop to of let's see 47.7 six six m o a all right and that is for our 90 degree temperature column um target direction is due north and our altitude's 1100 feet so we're gonna have to convert now we're gonna have to convert altitude in there as well All right, so we're going to do for the altitude, we're going to change that for altitude correction. We're going to go 
0.87 divided by 29.26 equals that. And we're going to multiply that by our correct drop here. 47.66. And now we're going to get a corrected MOA drop of, because we're at a higher altitude, so it's going to drop a little bit less, of 47.02 MOA. All right. Now our bear, um, bear measure pressure, humidity. Okay. Now we can look at, we can go ahead and, and calculate let's just keep calculating for let's see that should be our convert our perfect drop there it should be about right it's not going to be perfect but it's going to be about right and then we need to look at wind i'm going to try to get this here all right so as you can tell with the wind uh, going from zero degrees up to 100, there is quite a bit of change, but going from 50 degrees to 100, there's not much change. Now, now when we get down here to 1,600 plus yards, there is a little bit of a change, but, you know, we are... We're going to do some a little bit of interpolation here and just kind of get this, at, you know, as close to where it should be as we can. So it's not, we're not shooting in the 100 degrees, we're at 90 degrees. So we're going to be way closer to this than we are the 50 degrees, right? So this is for a 10 mile per hour wind at full value at night coming from 90 degrees. At 1600 meters, it should be 7.3, but we're going to do the same thing that we did earlier, and we're going to take 7.9, subtract 7.3, and then uh, we're going to multiply that by 0.37. And then we're going to add that back to the 7.3 for 1600. And so we should be 7.52 minutes of angle for wind. This is going to be vertical. Let's see. Wind should be for 10 mile per hour should be let's see we'll do 10 mph it should be 7.52 moa and then that's for our altitude we're in uh, our barometric pressure area and then um we're also going to convert this because our wind speed is 17 miles per hour, right? So we're going to take 1.7 times 7.52. And we're going to get 12.7. Seven nine MOA. That is four hour drift. Now this is going this direction, right? But now we're not done yet because that's that. That's for a full value. But we're not. We don't have a full value going on here. What we have is a wind coming from two o'clock towards us, and that is going to be an 86.6%. So we got to take 12.79 and we got to multiply that by 
eight, six, uh, six. And so our actual wind correction is going to be 11.07. So right at 11 MOA. 11 MOA to the left. Or that's how much the bullet is going to be pushed by the wind, right? So now we've got that out of the way. Now we got to look at calculating our spin drift. So the, the calculation for that is 1.25 times the gyroscopic stability factor plus 1.2 times the time of flight to the power of 1.83. So because I didn't have it already set up on my chart, which I'm making a mental note. I got to go back in the computer and fix that on here to where I already have this set up. Uh, I just went ahead and did a cal run the ballistic calculator again to get my time of flight from there. Sorry guys, we're not doing any calculations as far as that goes. Um, and then we already had the calculated uh, gyroscopic stability factor. So this is what this uh, is going to look like. We're going to go 1.5 times 1.58 plus 1.2 times on our time of flight here, which we can do a little interpolation on it. We're going to do 2.502 minus 2.290, and we're going to... You get this, and then we're going to multiply that by 0 0.37. Uh, again. And then we're going to get that. And then we're going to add that to the short number 2.290. So our time of flight should be uh, 2.368. And then we're going to hold that to the power of 1.83. And we'll get... I'll go ahead and punch this in here. 1.25. Oh yeah, this is 1.25, not 1.5. So 1.25 times 1.58 plus 1.2 times 2... 0.368 and to the power of 1.83 and we're going to get a drift of this because we're right hand twist by the way we're going to get a spin drift of one of oh, sorry 16.83 inches and that's in inches so we can actually convert that to moa it's in inches 16.83 inches we're going to divide that by 16.37 we're shooting 1637 yards right so 16.37 and we're going to multiply that by 1.047 to get our minutes of angle at that exact distance and we are actually shooting 0.98 MOA. And this is going this direction and just spin drift. So we're going 16 inches back that way. So now we can add our horizontal Coriolis to this. And your horizontal uh, Coriolis is the uh, your omega times your range in feet times your time of flight times the sign of the latitude you're on so and the omega symbol or the omega constant is 0.0000729 and that has to do with the rotation of the earth the spin of the earth so 
Let's see. What's our range in feet for 1,637 yards? We're going to multiply that by 3. 4,911 feet. So times 4,911. And then we multiply that by our time of flight, which was 2.3. Six, eight. And we're going to multiply that by the sine times the sine of 34.7, which is our latitude. So 0.0000729 times 49.11. Times 2.368 times sine 34.7 equals 0.48. Now, here's where one of those problems comes into effect that I don't know exactly what that means. Is that 0.48 feet? 0.48 minutes of angle uh, you know I just I'm not really sure what's going on there so I have converted it to feet before because I think that that sounds right so times 12 inches would be 5.7 inches Five point seven inches that way, so and then we can convert that to minutes of angle sixteen point three seven times and that would give us point three seven m o a. So you can add those two together uh, and go 0.37 plus 0.98 equals 1.35. And then you can do, because your other drift is going the other, other way, this one's going this way, and your wind drift is 11 Point oh seven. That way, you can go eleven point oh seven minus one point three five, and you're gonna get to go. You're still going nine point seven two that way. So we've figured out that we need to come up. 47.02 minutes of angle and we need to adjust to the left by or shift our uh, we're going to be impacting left so we need to aim a little more I guess adjust right 9.72 minutes of angle so yeah now, I think that I'm probably wrong on some of this, and I need you guys to help me out and make sure that I'm not giving people the wrong information. I think I'm doing it pretty good, but I think that I could be a little bit wrong. I just uh, wanted to share with you guys some real technical fun stuff when it comes to doing math for long-range shooting instead of using a a uh, ballistic solver because the one thing that the ballistic solvers don't really do is they do not account for uh, muzzle velocity variation due to ammunition temperature and environmental temperature and that sort of thing they can do pretty good with about everything else um, but that's the one thing that they really don't figure out very well and just 
a few degrees difference in temperature shooting that far can mean a lot. So, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we will see you next time in the next one. Thanks for watching.